Chan and I were developing another movie, uh, this crazy superhero movie, Gambit, that eventually didn't happen. And when, what are we gonna do? We were gonna direct that movie, and right around that time, Chan's dog, Lulu, got very sick, and he went on a road trip with her, and came back and told us the story of his trip, and we were all in tears, and we just looked at each other and said, I don't know what this is gonna be, but we have to make a movie about this and the way that it feels. You don't do anything else psychotic on this trip? Maybe we can have some fun. Is that a deal, Shake? <laughs> and that led us back to our documentary, War Dog, that we did with HBO and, and the Army Rangers, the dog handlers. These characters in, in, that, in our documentary, I just w I fell in love with them. They're, they're funny. They're actually really emotionally deep. They're not always politically correct. But what they believe in and the people and the things that they love, they love them adamantly. I think that's why we really kind of we're drawn to this community because in a world where no one's allowed to say anything or do anything that's that's wrong or real and you know we're all trying to be politically correct which we should be I think you know I think we need to be more conscious of what we're saying how we're saying it and who we're saying it to and, and how that makes them feel but movies I think are these really small little capsules of hopefully real people that have like actual growth to do. So I wanted to start Briggs off somewhere where he doesn't just start this like politically correct person. He grows and starts to sort of grow a heart like the Grinch, <laughs> you know, in the movie. He, he doesn't care about almost anything or anyone in the beginning of this movie. And then this dog sort of really teaches him how to take care of something and how to love something and, in his own way. We knew we wanted to make a movie about surrender and moving on and change. And we definitely knew that we wanted to make a film that felt like the great old road movies that we loved and so that was another thing for us is Hal Ashby you know Robert Altman like kind of honoring that tradition of American road movies and those are movies that we love they're also experiences that we love so we thought we'd try to bring that back into the world in a way too good girl will you give hugs now really a Lulu gets the best hug you've never had a Lulu hug no, we don't, we don't, we don't exactly hug. I don't know who was harder, me or the dog, uh, for Reed, <laughs> to be honest. But we'll talk about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the dog. But I think the silver lining about working with a dog is it really forces you to both A, have a plan, and then be flexible when the plan doesn't work which I actually learned was the greatest way to create in a movie setting is like, the wonderful thing about shooting a scene is that you've got to go there and be able to be surprised and let it become whatever it wants to be. And the dog, I mean, she's just gonna do whatever she's gonna do. When your plan goes out the window, you get to rediscover what the scene is in the moment. And I thought that was kind of the loveliest thing about working with, a, with an animal. But yeah, it was challenging. I mean, there are days where you go like, here's what the shot is, and she's just not doing it, and the light's running out, and you're like, well, we don't have a shot anymore. And then you just have to figure it out. So, yeah. yeah. I would look at the shot list every day and just be like, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Never gonna happen. <laughs> well, that's never happening. You literally get to like the second the second shot of the day and we're already at lunch and we're just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're never gonna yeah. make this. <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow it all works out. That's yeah. the weirdest and thing. Then, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's nothing about magic like, that's not surprising to me. Like even the fact that like Soderbergh wanted to direct it in the yeah. first place, like, I, yeah. and how it came about. I thought like, it was a prank. Yeah, like there wasn't even hardly anything on the page of the character that I did in Haywire, but I just wanted to be on a Soderbergh movie. I was just like, I'll be a better actor after this movie, and and I just was a fan. After work, uh, we were just sitting in the hotel bar, and and you know Soderbergh loves to do that, and we just were talking, and I told him about my experience, you know, as a stripper, and he's like, that would make a good movie, and and I was like, well, funny that you say that. I'm trying to make it, and he didn't say I would do it or anything. Cut to almost like eight months later, there's a video of me that came out when I was actually stripping. Someone interviewed him, which I still need to find this person because they're the whole reason why Magic Mike started because they asked Soderbergh would he direct the movie of my stripping days and he was like absolutely mm -hmm. and in the interview and someone sent it to me and then I called him up I was like yo how much how much were you bullshitting in this in this uh, interview and he's like I'm serious it's a bone spur and he's like let's meet at Carney's on Sunset and we'll talk about it I sat down across from him and we both had hot dogs <laughs> and he's like we should finance it ourselves, you should act in it, uh, I'll direct it, and your buddy should write it. It never even met you, right? No. I, I met him for the first time when I pitched him the script at your house. <laughs> I was like, here's what I think we could do. And he was like, that's great. Change, Change this, this to this, this and this to that. <laughs> yeah. And then can you have it by, I think it was like April or something like that. I was like, yes, sir, I definitely can. And that was it. Yeah, and then we didn't sleep for a month. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. wrote it in a month. Yeah, like, and yeah. That was, it was a month. And that was it. He basically was like, if we can make this slot of time, like, then we can make the movie, and if not, I can't make the movie, I'm retiring. And we were just like, okay, well. Yeah, 
there's only really one one option for us. So yeah. <laughs> I was like whipping him to like, <laughs> like wake up. <laughs> Put your fingers back on the case. That's actually a perfect articulation of why we have a company too, because at that time, no disrespect, but everybody in Chan's world was basically saying, why would you ever do your stripper story? Like, don't be a stripper, that's not cool. That's gonna ruin you. And we kind of looked at each other and went, I think that's the greatest idea of all time. Like, <laughs> why don't we ruin you? And then and then let's do it. And, and the company allows us to do those things that you know, the system might initially say no. Welcome to the Crazy Club, kid. I was hoping this was all a joke. It's pretty funny. I wrote the first one in a month. I wrote the second one in two and a half weeks, which is <laughs> surprising even to me. And uh, no, I love the script. I think it's gonna be a really different movie than the first two. One of the things I'm most proud of about the franchise is that each movie has its own identity. And this is gonna be the same in that it's a tonal and stylistic departure from yes. the other two films. And so each one is its own statement and it's not just like trying to continue some franchise. It's really something that all of us believe in as artists in this territory that we really want to explore. It's more like a musical, dance school, a modern version of that kind of a thing. And, and that's what really excites us, very performance-based. We just wanted yeah. to like, the sickest dancing that we can possibly create. Mm -hmm.